Welcome back to High Stakes. Today, we will be discussing the following MLB matches that is happening on Sunday, September 3, 2023. We will be providing our team, total and prop picks for the day. Before we get started, please remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. If you want access to our premium picks, you can check out our Patreon page. You can find the link to our Patreon page in the description and comment section below. Chicago Cubs vs Cincinnati Reds. Give me the Reds as a home underdog. And here is why. The Cubs are continuing their surge up the standings since the All-Star break, with 7 wins in their last 10 games. They gained ground on the first place Milwaukee Brewers earlier this week by taking 2 out of 3 games before splitting a doubleheader at Cincinnati on Friday. Chicago took the first game of the twin bill, 6-2, before losing a 2-1 lead in the ninth inning and falling in Friday's nightcap, 3-2. Cody Bellinger had a big day on Friday, going 4-4-8 with two home runs and four RBI in the two games. Chicago now trails the Brewers by three games in the NL Central, but still holds the second wild card spot in the National League. Bellinger has been a big reason for the Cubs' success in the second half of the season. Over the past month, he is batting .313 with 6 home runs, 32 RBI and 6 stolen bases. He's now hitting .316 on the season with 20 home runs and 18 steals. Nico Horner has set the table for Bellinger and the rest of the Cubs out of the leadoff spot this season. Horner has now accumulated team highs of 80 runs scored and 34 stolen bases. As a team, the Cubs are averaging 5 runs per game, which is tied for 6th in all of baseball. They hit .253 and also rank in the middle of the pack in other offensive categories, such as Ops, .744, and Home Runs, 158. Chicago ranks 6th in the MLB in stolen bases with 112. On the mound Sunday, Jamison Talon is expected to make his 25th start of the season for Chicago. Talon is 7-9 with a 5.62 ERA and a 1.36 whip to go along with 106 strikeouts in 121.2 innings. He took the loss on Monday in his most recent outing, lasting six innings and giving up nine hits and five runs, four earned. The 31-year-old right-hander is 58-44 with a 4.08 ERA in his seven-year MLB career. With the signings of Hunter Renfro and Harrison Bader on Thursday, the Reds seem to be doing everything possible to stay in playoff contention, despite the youth and inexperience on their roster. Cincinnati is also getting a big boost this weekend, with the return of Jake Frawley from the Illinois. Before his injury, Frawley had been one of the Reds' most productive and consistent hitters and base stealers this season. The Reds have been battling a lot of injuries recently, but these three outfielders can step in and help fill some voids left by Jonathan India, Matt McLean, and Joey Votto by moving Spencer Steer back into the infielder. Cincinnati is happy to return home this weekend following a long 10-game West Coast road trip where their bats were fairly quiet. With some experience being added to the Reds' lineup, it's a good time for them to wake up against Jamison Talon, who has allowed 13 hits and 6 runs in 9.2 innings against Cincinnati this season. Talon's ERA was over 6.00 in 6 starts in August. I expect Cincinnati to capitalize at Great American Ballpark in front of a big crowd. I'm siding with the under as total pick. And here is why. Brandon Williamson has pitched in some very low-scoring games recently, with the under hitting in each of his last 5 starts. Part of that is because the Reds' offense has cooled off a bit since they made their surge around the All-Star break, but it's also a credit to how good Williamson has been lately. His ERA was 2.45 for the month of July and 3.67 for August. Chicago, meanwhile, has seen the under hit in each of its last five games, and the Cubs have scored three runs or fewer in four of those games. Both teams have been a bit of a roller coaster this season offensively, and in the end, Cincinnati and Chicago both rank in the middle of the pack for most major offensive categories. I think strong pitching is going to win out in this matchup on Sunday, with Williamson helping his team to a low-scoring victory at GABP. I've got the Redlegs, 5-3. Philadelphia Phillies vs Milwaukee Brewers. Take Milwaukee. And here is why. The Brewers will trot out Wade Mealy in the finale of this crucial series with the Phillies. He earned the win over the Cubs in a start last Monday, allowing two runs on four hits and no walks, while striking out one batter over six innings. Mealy served up a pair of homers in the contest, but they were both solo shots, and those were the only runs Chicago could manage against him. According to Yahoo.com, the left-hander got the job done by getting 11 of his 18 outs via grounders, making up for the fact that he got just four swinging strikes and one punch-out. Mealy's quality start was his eighth in 18 outings this season, and he has put together a strong 3.17 RA and 1.14 whip, despite striking out just 60 batters over 93.2 innings. He faces a tough Phillies team in the finale of this series, who still have a bad taste in its mouth from the meltdown Friday. 
Milwaukee has been red hot, surging back to first place in the National League Central and winning 10 of 12. They are playing their best baseball of the season at the best possible time. In the decisive game of this critical series against the Phillies, the Brewers are sending Wade Mealy to the mound. In his previous start last Monday against the Cubs, he secured a victory by limiting them to two runs on four hits without issuing any walks, while striking out one batter over six innings. Mealy's opponent will be Ranger Suarez, who hasn't seen action on the mound for nearly a month. Milwaukee has been on a dominant streak through the end of August, winning 10 of their last 12 games and currently leading the National League Central Division. Considering Suarez's potential need for a week or two to regain his form, I'm inclined to favor the Brewers in this series finale. In addition to their impressive winning streak, the Brewers have emerged victorious in five of their last seven matchups against National League opponents. It's worth noting that Milwaukee boasts the best record in MLB for allowing the fewest hits per game, averaging just 7.7 .7 hits per contest. While Mealy may not be known for striking out many batters, there's confidence in his ability to deliver a solid five innings on the mound. Look for both clubs to stay sharp and this game to go under as a total pick, and here is why. Run scoring is always at a premium when facing the Brewers. Not only are they allowing the fewest hits in MLB, but their bats are finally coming around after a dreadful start to the year. The Phillies will bring back Ranger Suarez, hamstring, from the 15-day injured list to start the Sunday's series finale. The 28-year-old left-hander had registered a 3.88 ERA and 89.35 KBB for 97.1 innings, 17 starts, this season for the Phillies, prior to landing on the injured list. Philadelphia hits righties and lefties about the same, so expect to see another solid five-inning performance from Mealy, with both sides limiting the damage after Friday's debacle in the field. Miami Marlins vs. Washington Nationals. Take Miami Marlins minus 1.5 runs. And here is why. Miami won their second straight game as they took care of business in extra innings by downing Washington Friday night on the road. The Marlins entered Saturday 68-67 on the year and stood third in the NL East, 21.5 games behind the Braves for the top spot. They were two games behind the Giants and Diamondbacks, who were tied for the final wild card spot in the NL playoff picture. On Friday night, Miami got two hits each from Luis Serres, two runs, Jazz Chisholm Jr., run, two RBI, and Garrett Hampson, run, two RBI, in the win. Hampson, his 11th, homered as part of a four-run 11th inning to send the Marlins to victory. Yuri Perez didn't factor in the decision as he threw 4.2 innings, allowing three runs on five hits with three walks and five strikeouts. Tanner Scott, 7-4, earned the win as he threw two innings, allowing two runs, none earned, on two hits with no walks and one strikeout. Sandy Alcantara is on the hill for the Marlins as he logs his 28th start of the season in this contest. He enters this one 6-12 with a 4.23 ERA, a 1.206 whip, 46 walks and 148 strikeouts over 176.2 innings of work on the year. Alcantara took the loss in his last start, which came Tuesday at home against the Rays. He threw 5.2 innings, allowing 4 runs on 7 hits with 2 walks and 4 strikeouts, in a game the Marlins lost 11-2. In his last three starts, Alcantara is 1-2 with a 5.40 ERA, a 1.47 whip, 6 walks and 13 strikeouts over 18.1 innings of work. Alcantara makes his 15th career start against the Nationals in this contest. He is 6-6 with a 3.53 ERA, a 1.187 whip, 29 walks and 63 strikeouts over 89.1 innings of work against them. Alcantara is 3-3 with a 3.98 ERA, a 1.302 whip, 15 walks and 30 strikeouts over 43 innings of work in seven career starts at Nationals Park. Washington has played tough in the second half of the season, but the fact remains that they are still a very young team that is trying to figure out how all the pieces fit. Gray has sputtered in his last few outings, and his control has deteriorated of late, with more walks than strikeouts in his last three starts. In those outings, he's averaged more than a walk per inning, which has to be concerning. Alcantara has taken a step back from last year's NL Cy Young season, but the fact remains that he is still a capable starting pitcher that could be a factor on a playoff team. Miami is still in the thick of the wild card picture in the NL, and that means taking care of business in situations like this. Give the Marlins the edge in this contest as they put this one in the win column. As for our total pick go with the over.